In case you guys missed the community post, Verizon raises its dividend by 2% to uh, 64 cents. Uh, Verizon declares uh, 64 cents per share quarterly, which is a 2% increase from the prior 62 cents they were paying out. Uh, this is obviously barely keeping up with inflation, if it even is, because uh, inflation has been going up. Uh, so definitely stick around for this video because I will be talking about uh, Verizon and what I ended up doing in my portfolio with this uh, company. What's up everybody, this Investing Sensei here to bring you episode 99 of the Portfolio Update. Uh, it's so funny, we're one episode away from actually having 100 weekly updates. Uh, so that is pretty cool but uh anyways i am going to have a, quite a bit of content this episode i want to go over one of the companies well i guess verizon uh what i'm doing with that company and what i did uh, as well there is another company that i am planning to buy in uh, september because i did oversell and i will tell you guys why it oversold and i think it could become a great buying opportunity for us in the long term so definitely stick around uh, we're gonna get into it and uh as you guys can see the portfolio is trading at one hundred and ninety three thousand one hundred fifty four dollars and sixty seven cents uh, you'll see we do have a cash balance of five dollars fifty one cents uh, this was from a dividend and so it will be reinvested on tuesday because remember guys monday the market will be closed unfortunately uh, but in the meantime, you guys already know that our portfolio, well, I guess our dividend growth portfolio, is making us uh, 31 cents per hour that goes by or $7.50 every day that goes by. So that is pretty sweet. Uh, so our portfolio is still working even while the market is down. So it is uh, pretty awesome to be a dividend growth investor. If uh, you are a dividend growth investor, let me know in the comment section. I kind of already know most of the people that do interact with me in the comment section. So I know what type of uh, investments you are. So uh, I'll see you guys in the comment section. But anyways, if we look at the value over time, you'll see that the portfolio overall has just been trending upwards. Uh, if we look at the one month, you can kind of see that the portfolio has been fluctuating. It's going upwards in the upwards direction. I think the one quarter uh, shows it much better. You'll see that uh, this all the way from June, we were at 172. I can't believe we were even at 172 back in June. Now we're at 193, guys. This is pretty awesome. I think in a couple months, we're going to be in the 200s. So uh, we will see how that plays out. But you know, already that our uh goal is to try to get this to three thousand dollars for the end of the year so that we can make three thousand every year and then uh, that should average us out to about 250 dollars a month that is pretty awesome because it's passive income and remember that um with dividends uh whenever you do hold a company for more than uh three months uh it becomes qualified dividends so that means that you will only pay about 15 percent to 20 percent depending on your tax bracket but uh that is a pretty sweet gain imagine making 250 dollars you're only going to pay about 15 percent majority of us will fall under the 15 percent i definitely will be falling under the 15 percent uh but imagine paying only uh 15 percent on 250 dollars a month that is a pretty sweet uh, benefit versus uh, paying regular uh, ordinary tax income. Uh, but anyways, if we look over at the portfolio, guys, uh, you'll see something different uh, with the sub pie. So there is one sector that is missing now, and that is the communication sector. I completely sold out in the communication sector. I did have uh, also American Towers, which I finally ended up moving into the real estate sector. Uh, so it actually fits perfectly. I went ahead and put it to 30% allocation uh, in relative income, 70% uh, allocation. So uh, total invested $5,696. And uh, we are going to see that in the activities. Uh, so there's no more communication sector. Uh, I think uh, it's a fine play, especially for us that we have about 10 to 20 to even 30 years before we even consider touching this money uh, just the stocks that I know of like AT&T and Verizon uh, they are not stocks that uh, really you know do great returns as you saw the dividend increase it was like a 2% 
increase that was uh, not a very good increase for us especially for the long term and if I pull up seeking alpha for you guys and uh, so I have Verizon uh, currently Verizon's trading around $55 and 43 cents and actually if I show you guys the summary uh, on why I actually sold this so if we look at the one year you just see that it's just fluctuating between $60 and 55 ish dollars and so if we look at the 10 year you'll see that uh, it kind of really doesn't move much for 10 years guys it went from $37 to about $55 that's about 13 18 dollars uh, max years here you'll see that it's just fluctuating uh, for the max year since 1992 it's been trading from like 90s to I guess this one was a peak as well 70s 90s and then it's just been going up uh, we want companies like uh, let me show you guys if we look at uh, Apple we want companies like this that you look at the 10 year and it's just moving upwards guys this is the stuff that will help us reach fire and uh, if we look at the max this is the type of stuff we want we don't want that verizon type of stuff uh, so that is why one of the reasons why i sold verizon it has no growth and then the dividend raises are just puny uh, they're not even barely keeping up with inflation uh, verizon is a good play if let's say i was retiring tomorrow it's a it's a great dividend yield uh, and you know pretty stable but uh, it just has no growth for me and i have 10 20 years from now you know time to grow and have that compounding remember uh, time is on our side and so we need to take advantage of that uh, so while we have that but if we look at the dividend I want to show you guys the dividend summary you'll see that uh, their dividend yield is 4.62 percent which is good if you're going to be retiring soon because it's a stable company uh, they've been growing it for the five-year Kager is 2.12 percent as you guys saw that the raise was two percent uh, eight years is have what they've been growing it at and so pay at ratio 48 percent so they still have some gr room to grow it some but just this five-year caker is not there so now let's talk about the company that i plan to buy and i think it oversold and that is avi guys so avi uh, if we look at the one month you'll see that uh, avi was trading at the top was around 120 dollars 78 cents it actually sold off and it sold off about maybe i would say like eight percent uh so i think it's a great buying opportunity and i'm going to show you guys uh this uh article so avi stock dropped after fda warning uh analysis say uh sell off is overblown so let's go over this real quick uh shares of the drug maker avi fell as much as 12.2 percent during the intraday trading uh and so the u.s food and drug administration said that it determined that the use use of a class of drugs known as a JAK inhibitor increases the risk of cancer and serious heart related events and death so uh, this sell-off may be overblown uh, as the FDA announcement uh, will have wide-ranging implications for a number of big pharma and biotech firms that could take time to play out the FDA uh, the FDA said that it would require new warnings to be included in the prescribing information of three JAK inhibitors already approved. So uh, these are JAK inhibita inhibitors uh, for companies like Pfizer and uh, Avi. For Avi, it's the Rinvoq uh, drug, which uh, is one of the top selling drugs. And uh, actually, Avi uh, responded in the statement saying that Avi believes in the benefit risk profile of Renbook and uh, continue to work with uh, FDA to bring Renbook to a, uh, patients living in, uh, with immune mitigated diseases. So uh, Avi is full, you know, they're going to get this uh, prescribing information and they're going to comply with the FDA. I think it is also oversold, especially if you think uh, 
that uh, Abby will do fine in the long term. It's just a great buying opportunity for FD, uh, not for FDA, but uh, for Abby. And that is what I will be doing, guys. I will be buying Abby. You'll see that uh, Abby's uh, P for PE is at around 8.85. And so if we look at the dividend rate, uh, they're paying about $5.20. And uh, the dividend yield right now is around 4.66%. Uh, and so if we look at uh, the dividends here, if I can pull it up for you guys. So yeah, the dividend yield is at 4.66%. The annual payout is $5.20. So that's how much they pay out every year. Uh, payout ratio is 41.23%. So they have quite a bit of room to grow uh, the dividend in the five-year Kager guys these are the type of Kagers that I love to see because we have so much time on our side imagine compounding at 10% or even just a double digit Kager uh, this one is 18% I think that it will go down some especially because uh, as the company grows more uh, and the payout ratio increases uh, we'll see that uh, dividend growth is eight years but uh, they do have Abbott, which they've been paying. I believe they're almost going to be a dividend king, or if they're not already. But uh, they were spun off for Abby, And so I think Abby is a great company to uh, hold for the long term. And I think this uh, sell-off that happened is overblown. And I... Uh, will be taking this opportunity to buy some more shares and uh, increase my uh, position in Abvi. In the long term, I think it will pay off. If we look at the dividend history, uh, you'll see that um, actually uh, Abvi uh, last year was paying a dollar and 18 cents and now they uh, increased it to a dollar and 30 cents. As you'll see that uh, typically they increase it on the first uh, quarter of the year. So. Uh, usually they announce it around November so you'll see November there uh, so in November we should hopefully uh, see a new dividend raise for us so we'll see what happens I think it'll be a double digit caker um, raise and so I'm excited because I think right now the buying opportunity we're going to be doing in September will pay off in the long term as well if I show you guys the spreadsheet if I look at the holdings uh, so if I actually filter out by uh, alphabetical order we have Abby right here I have 25 shares and so cost basis right now is about two thousand one hundred sixty eight dollars uh, our actual cost basis per share is eighty three dollars and ninety seven cents so you'll see that we are we have a really good average uh, yield on cost so our actual yield on cost is 6.19 percent uh, the dividend yield right now is 4.35 and uh, if you'll see our projected payout is $134.26 from our current shares but we're going to try to bring this up I think uh, we can continue to do that especially on the sell-off and in the long term this will pay off but uh, that is the company I will be buying, guys, in September. Let me know your thoughts, and uh, I will be happy to see those in the comment section. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and go into the activities because I did do quite a few things. Remember that I did move American Towers uh, from the communication sub pie into the real estate. Uh, I actually did not sell that company. I actually did a type of strategy in M1 that you could do to move those sub pies. The reason why I didn't want to sell because I would create a taxable event. And actually, let me show you guys that. Uh, so if we look at the real estate here and you look at the American Towers, you'll see that it'll still say that we have 4.3 shares and our cost basis is uh, $201 per share. Uh, you'll see that it's trading at 302. So we were able to keep our uh, information and we didn't do a taxable event because I don't want to try to pay taxes on this uh, just from moving sub pies. So if we look at the activities and uh, we actually find uh, the date. So if we do August 30th, 2021, you'll see that we did quite a few things. So um, let's see, on the 30th, I actually did the move so you'll see I did one sell so that was the two thousand three hundred forty seven dollars and ninety eight cents and one buy of fifteen dollars thirteen cents so if I open it up 
I actually bought uh, $15.13 from Starbucks. This was actually just reinvesting. So this was the drip and then the Verizon. This was the sell. Actually, yeah, sorry. It was not American Towers. Uh, so I did completely sell out of Verizon. So this was the communication sub pie that I sold out of. So I sold out of um, Verizon. And then I had $2,300 that I had time to reinvest. So on the afternoon trade, I did one buy. And get sweat guys i bought more lockheed martin it bought me almost uh, 6.5 shares of lockheed martin uh, around 362 dollars i think this will be a great long-term investment for us and i think it'll pay off uh the next one here guys you are seeing a withdrawal of twenty five thousand dollars. this was actually from m1 borrow and the reason why i did this is because one of my family members actually uh required some money uh immediately and uh the only way I could let them borrow money is by uh, doing M1 borrow without, uh, well I guess it's the best strategy for me to do was just use M1 borrow. They'll be paying it back off in uh, maybe two months and so I'll pay off that M1 borrow. But the reason why I had to do M1 borrow is because uh, if I did it from my other brokerages and I sold some of my positions, I would be creating a taxable event and it just would not benefit me. Uh, this actually just doesn't hurt me because, you know, they're obviously going to pay me back and uh, they plan to pay me off for any of the interest that uh, got accrued while uh, we borrowed this money. So uh, that is why I actually have this position here. And then you'll see September 1st, American Waterworks, uh, we have $6.90 and then Visa dividend of $7.99. And then uh, this was the 25K is how much we generated in like one or two days of $1.39. So they will be paying that off. On the 2nd of September, we deposited $100. And then uh, we reinvested those $100 plus the dividends from uh, Visa and American Waterworks. So if we look at this, guys, we uh, have $27.99 from Visa. Remember, we added $20 on top of every time a company pays us off. Honeywell, $20 because they were going to pay us off this week. Clorox, I basically reinvested the rest of the money into Clorox, $40. And then uh, $26.99 from American Waterworks. Uh, and then we got the Honeywell dividend, guys, of $5.50. And so uh, you'll see, and actually it doesn't even show the movement, which is uh, actually pretty interesting. Uh, but anyways, the movement was here from American Towers. If you guys want me to show you how to move uh, a stock from one sub pie to another pie, let me know. I can make a video on that. Uh, and uh, this was actually just a leftover from American Towers because when you do the strategy, you can't move every single thing. You'll probably have like maybe two or three dollars left over. Uh, but uh, it just got reinvested into uh, air products and chemicals. Uh, but uh, this is what I did for this week, guys. Let me go ahead and refresh this page so that we can see the green button pop up so we can find out how much we made in dividends this week. And uh, I'll go ahead and do the filter real quick. And again, I do have a, a tutorial on this script. So let's find out how much we made for this week in passive income. So we made $20.39, guys, in passive income. We had to do absolutely nothing for these $20.39. So that is pretty awesome. And so we're going to continue to grow this over time. And I'm excited to see this grow and grow. Uh, but anyways, guys, let's go ahead and uh, actually jump over to the Google Sheets so that we can find out how much we increased uh, our projected income because that is what we come back every single week and see how that grows and grows because, uh, you know, the market could be volatile as you guys saw over here if we look at the value over time, how we had that crash. Our dividends continue to pour in no matter what the portfolio value was and we continue to grow and grow that out because that is our main goal. But uh, let's go ahead and jump over here to the Google Sheets. If I look at the dashboard uh, real quick, you'll see that our quarterly dividends, uh, we actually finished up August. And if you guys missed that video, uh, this actually bought us up on the 2021 Q3 to $361. And so we're waiting on the month of September. As you guys saw already, the dividends are pouring in, which is exciting. And uh, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of this because uh, whenever we do kick off these scripts, we should see new values pop up uh, well, hopefully we can get this to 2,800 uh, soon in the coming weeks 
Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and go over here to dividend payout. If uh, this actually tells us what's coming up in the dividends. So um, let's go ahead and click portfolio tools, get latest dividends. And uh, actually I haven't updated the Verizon uh, symbol or Verizon information here. So we'll, we'll probably still see it here. And uh, it'll be a little, you can just ignore it, but you'll see the dividend raise from Verizon until we uh, get rid of it in the tickers. I'll probably do that this week. And so you'll see the Verizon one here, but remember we actually sold out of Verizon. So this doesn't really matter for us, uh, but you'll see Johnson & Johnson is gonna pay us on the 7th of September. Pfizer, Skyworks, and Southern Companies. So uh, this is gonna be a great week. Uh, and then uh, Microsoft, 3Ms, McDonald's, Relative Income. So this is gonna be exciting, guys. I love September, or well, I guess the third month of every quarter because those are the dividends that just keep pouring in every single week. And we see that snowball grow larger and larger. Uh, obviously, I'll probably be broke next week because remember, I am gonna put $20 per company that pays me out. So uh, we'll see how much I have to pay out this next coming week. And as well, I'll be buying Avi. So uh, anyways, let's go over here to settings and uh we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this right here and we're gonna jump over to personal capital so that we can copy the content of our new portfolio so we can see how much our projected income increased so let's go ahead and jump over there all right guys so we're at personal capital on my m1 account you'll see this green button copies the content of your holdings from the table uh, I'm actually gonna sort this out, which I guess it doesn't matter because I have a developer script that actually grabs some other information that I will be releasing hopefully soon. Uh, so click copy holdings. This copies the content of that into your clipboard. Then we can jump back over to the Google Sheets. Right click, paste uh, special values only. And uh, then we can jump over here to the holdings and uh, hopefully everything runs. So. We're gonna go ahead and actually, while we're here, let's look at Lockheed Martin, uh, 14 shares. So we should hopefully be at the 20 shares after this. So portfolio tools, uh, update portfolio holdings, and uh, we'll wait a couple. There it goes. We'll actually jump over here to the Google Sheets. I love seeing this continue to increase and we'll see how, uh, how much we go up after this. We might actually go down and uh, we actually went down guys uh so uh remember verizon was paying a high dividend yield so uh oh well but uh, i think long term this is a great strategy move that we did we got rid of a company that has rarely any growth and uh we'll recover this very soon so we obviously went down and so that's kind of sad but i think these dividend raises that will be coming up in the couple quarters uh, it'll make up for it. Uh, but if we look, you'll see, uh, I'll go ahead and filter it out by alphabetical order. And you'll see Lockheed Martin, guys, $20. Well, I guess not $20, but 20 shares. Let's go ahead and see how much we're going to get from them a year. So $213.30. And I'm just curious. Let's go find out how much, well, I guess, which ones are the ones that pay us the most. So... I guess I gotta do Z to A. So our biggest paying one is JP Morgan, followed by Lockheed Martin. That is pretty awesome. And then uh, obviously it's uh, Altria, and then it's Apple, Microsoft. So that is pretty cool, guys. But uh, anyways, this is all I have for you guys in this episode. Be sure that you're subscribed with that bell notification if you guys enjoy the content as well. Don't forget to support the channel by simply hitting the like button. Let me know what you guys think about Abby and Verizon in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Stay safe out there. Bye, guys.